Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic Joseph from this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at the Zerg's inventories, random rolls, my recommendations for January 29th, 2021. You can find the Zerg in his regular location on Nessus, just head over to the Watcher's Grave and make your way on top of this tree right here and this is where he stands. And then obviously the Zer lasts until next Tuesday at reset. This is a high overview of everything he has available in case this is all you cared about. Moving on to the weapon today, we have the Graviton Forfeit. At some point in its time, it was an absolute destruction hound in the Crucible, absolutely ripping it up from beyond scout rifle range because that second shot was extremely high damage and had no damage fall off, and it also created huge explosions that killed a lot of people very often. They did nerf it quite a bit since then, and it's really not being used that much, and it's never really been that much of a PvE weapon. If you've never heard of it, it fires two bullets at a time, the first one doing very little damage, the second one doing ten times the damage of the first one and the rounds per minute is 257 which apparently is linked to something with black holes i can't remember and of course that second shot has no fall off and high recoil which means that second shot's the only thing that matters if you do end up getting a kill with this weapon you actually get the dragonfly explosion and then some axiom bolts from the target which are really nice but not really enough these days for either pvp or pve and it does have a catalyst which i forget what exactly it does in my opinion, it's not really that great of a weapon for either mode, and I personally would not recommend it. Moving on to the Hunter exotic today, we have the Shinobu's Vow. One of my favorite exotics from the Hunter that is not in my top 10. If you don't know, I made a top 10 for Hunter exotics very recently, within the last few weeks, and this one was very close. It's probably be like number 11 or 12, and it's very fun, and depending on what kind of special stuff going on, it may be overpowered. If you've never heard of it, it improves the skip grenade, meaning it has more twibbly bits. You also gain an additional skip grenade charge, and skip grenades uh, return energy when it damages enemies. So you're just throwing more skip grenades with more twiddly bits, with more skip grenade charges, with more skip grenade return. I'm getting skip grenade damage. This thing is a lot of fun, and skip grenade does a lot of damage, both PvE and PvP. Unfortunately, Ark is not really that strong in either PvE or PvP, so this exotic really hasn't seen that much use. As far as these stats go, you'd like to see a primary in Discipline, Recovery, and then Mobility. Obviously, it doesn't have much mobility, and the Discipline is, you know, a bit lacking, but it has some recovery, and overall total stats of 62 is not bad. I would say it's a decent roll, but you could do a lot better. Moving on to the Titan exotic today, we have the Armamentarium, an exotic that came out, I think, with the base game in Destiny 1, and yet still does does not have an ornament. If you've never heard of this exotic, you gain an additional grenade charge. Now, there used to be a point in time where I did not respect an additional charge or whatever whatsoever. However, I have started to realize that overflow charging, meaning that if you're not using your first grenade, you're getting your second grenade, is really strong. And on top of that, it's also universal, meaning that it can be used with stasis, and it's one of the best PvE stasis, and honestly, PvE stasis exotic for Titan. When it comes to the role, you'd like to see a lot of discipline and recovery. It doesn't really have that much discipline and recovery, but it also doesn't really have too many things in places that you don't want it and a total stat of 66 is pretty good so if you want to get this and compensate with other exotics it's a pretty good choice moving on to the warlock exotic today we have the getaway artist a very fun and unique exotic i honestly wish bungie would do more things like this not exactly like this but in this vein of uniqueness if you've never heard of it you hold down the grenade button to convert your arc grenade into a supercharged arc soul this arc soul functions very similar to an autonomous turret very similar to the arc soul you get on your shoulder from that one subclass except for this one lasts for 20 seconds fires more often more accurately and is a lot stronger on top of that you can actually refresh Fresh this supercharged arc soul with the rift from the subclass arc soul to make it last even longer than before. And lastly, one of the best things about this is that any time that arc soul gets a kill, it counts as a grenade kill. So if you need an arc grenade kill for whatever reason, if there's a special artifact, whatever, this exotic allows you to do it pretty easily. It used to be back in the day when we had taken armaments, we just put that on our shoulder and we would get heavy ammo from like every other kill. It was crazy. As far as these stats go, honestly, I see a huge resilience, which in my opinion is not really well matched with this exotic you'd like to see a lot of recovery and discipline so it's a pretty trash tier uh, role for this particular exotic and you wouldn't really use it that often in PvP either I find it's m a bit more of a PvE exotic so not a great role not a great total so not really that's something that I would recommend however recently got a nice skin for it so that's pretty cool Outside of that, make sure you're picking up your exotic cipher, which will allow you to get more of those things from the exotic archive, the Monument of Light stuff, or if you want to go get some more exotic engrams, you can spend them here, and of course get exotics that you've never received before, and exotics with high stat rolls. Obviously, I'm going to spend my exotic cipher here, because I do not know what to do with my cipher, so I might as well spend them. Granite Tempest, much better option, and now I can 
can pick this up and get some credit for it. So the first thing I got with the Promethean Spur, uh, not really that, well actually not bad of a roll, but like a really trash tier exotic. And then I also got a Crown of Tempest, an incredible exotic that I already have a really good roll for. So it's gonna be hard. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to beat. Honestly, I've had like seven or eight Crown of Tempest drop in my lifetime. It's a great exotic and it's space game, but like, come on, dude, give me something else. <laughs> and that is gonna be pretty much the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below if any questions and concerns. Also, make sure you come check out the live streams that I have right after this video at twitch.tv, link in the description down below. If you'd like to come join us, we'd oftentimes do open lobbies, raids, nightfalls, and honestly, it doesn't matter if you have experience, as long as you're on PC, come join us. We have a lot of fun. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon, because without the support, videos like this and my spreadsheets would not be possible. So specifically, thank you to Medibuju, Mama Dash, Shadow Moon, Joe Smith, Monday, Natalie Halpin, Steve Bachnowitz, Justin Ray, Raymond, Joe, and Una Panther for their support on Patreon. And of course, thank you for watching. And that's going to be the end of it. My name is Zonai Chronic, and I will see you guys on the next one. I can't believe I just did that first try. That never happened.